to not write them down. Are you going to write them on your chalkboard or your preparing board? No. No. no, you're not writing them down. I just want you to think about these words. Okay? about them, what parts of speech you think they are, how you might use them in a sentence. Turn and talk to someone near you and tell them what you're thinking. You're already thinking of a sentence, I like it. Hey, three. Two, one, zero. What do we think about these words? What do you think, Sonia? Contradictory, which we've been working on in writing with persuasive writing. What else do you notice about these words, Daniel? I know that, like, whatever it means, like, you don't really care which way it goes. Mm -hmm. Okay, so you've kind of know the meaning of it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Like, you don't really care which way it goes. Mm -hmm. Okay, so you kind of know the words, ben Hart. Can you share my sentence? Um, you will get to share sentences in a second. Right. So I want you to turn and talk to that same partner that you just talked to, but I wanted to tell you what to talk about. I want you to talk about what part of speech you think these words are. Are they noun verbs, adjective adverbs, conjunctions, prepositions? What are they and why? What do you think? I think why do you think the word is? Okay, yeah, they want to coordinate the conjunctions for the one and whatever. Yeah, I think it's word. Three, two, one, zero. I'm going to do random because we've all talked to partners, so we should be able to answer. Hey. Elizabeth. Um, I think it's a subordinating conjunction. Why? Because, like, if you just have <coughs> whenever, you can't say, like, never move on. That's not, like, the sentence by itself. You can, like, add something to it. Absolutely. Do you remember what we call those sentences that aren't really sentences by themselves? Um, can everybody whisper it? No? Did you hear somebody? You got it, but what's it? <laughs> You're still in whisper mode. A dependent clause, right? So it could start a dependent clause. So they are subordinating conjunctions because both of them would begin a dependent clause. They would make the sentence complex. They would provide a transition between two ideas. And like we talked about yesterday, would indicate the time, place, or cause and effect relationship. So what I want you to do, and Benhar is already on my challenge mode. So. You're going to write a sentence on your whiteboard using one of these words. If you would like to challenge yourself, you can try to use both. Ben Har would like to challenge himself because I heard him thinking about that earlier. So go ahead and write on your whiteboards or on the desk. You do not have to write in cursive, but that's a great question to ask. I already have one now. You need to write it. Oh, is your mark not working? Yeah, he's working. Okay, go ahead and 
show your sin and share with the person you talked to first. common nouns in your sentence and mark a common noun. Bless you. Chicken. <laughs> chicken is a common noun. Yeah, so is one of chicken and one. Okay. If, what if it's a pronoun, Sophia asks, or Sonia, I don't know why I call you Sophia, it's both S's. You can go ahead and mark your pronouns. Do you see a pronoun in this sentence, Sonia? He is a pronoun. Stands for another noun.
So a noun of some kind, right? Yeah. So there's that common noun here. Look and see if there's any articles in your sentence. I found them. There's three of them, A, N, and B. Yeah, I don't know. A, N, A, N. I know, I confuse myself when I say that too sometimes. Well, <coughs> it is, good job. Okay, Cameron. Is rabbit the plural noun? Rabbit <coughs> is a plural what? Noun. Yep, what kind of noun, do you know? Um, common. Common noun, plural, common See if there's plural common nouns in your sentence. Yeah. Ooh, you have sprinkles. That's one of my very favorite plural common nouns because I love sprinkles. Okay, let's see a couple more. Tanner. Okay, so I know that this is complete sentence because, because there's a capital. Mm -hmm. Punctuation. Mm -hmm. Subject. Wolf. Okay, remember with complex sentences, it's a little complicated. The simple subject. What is the important part of the sentence? Whenever a wolf hunts or he hunts for rabbits, what's the information they want you to know? Um, hunts for rabbits. Hunts for rabbits. So, what would be the main subject of that clause? Whenever a wolf hunts, he hunts for rabbits. Who's doing the action in that part? He, right? So, that would be a simple subject in that sentence, right? But then the dependent clause, this is the thing doing the action. You're right. So find your simple subject. If your sentence is a sentence, then it should have a simple subject. Okay. It's probably going to be, or it is going to be an independent clause of your sentence, because it's the important part. I love how you included dialogue in yours. My goodness, read that. <coughs> I have two, two, two simple subjects. Do you think you have a compound subject? Okay, what else do we notice about this sentence? I'd love to hear something about it from a different perspective or something. Okay, Cameron. How could you do it from the wolf's perspective? Whenever I hunt, I hunt for rabbits. My favorite dinner. Oh, whenever I hunt, I hunt for rabbits. My favorite dinner. Yeah. So, what did you change in that sentence to make it a different perspective? What kinds of words? The setting would be in the woods. Because wolves live in the woods. Because wolves live in, live in the woods. Absolutely. Okay, write down what you think the setting of your sentence is. What did you imagine the setting to be? I don't know. You know yours very well. Yours, what, are you at a certain restaurant in this? Uh, probably a restaurant or a home. <laughs> or, or a home? You won't go there if there's chicken. I understand. Oh, wait, no. I'll have space for it sitting. Okay, I'm just thinking in your head. Oh, got it. What did you Yes. Well, where do you imagine yourself eating ice cream? Is that your setting? Chris, write your setting. Okay. What else do we notice about this sentence, Elizabeth? Is it third person objective? Why do you think it's third person objective? Because it says he, and then it's third person and um, subjective because it doesn't have any thoughts or feelings. It doesn't have thoughts or feelings. Kelsey is agree agreeing emphatically. Yes, it doesn't have thoughts or feelings, so it's objective and it's third person because it's saying he and not I, right? Okay, so I want you, we'll do one more person. Jackson, go for it. Is it positive actually? Hunts? Oh, yep, we labeled one but not the other. Awesome. Okay, so Ben Har would love to share a sentence. Are we okay if we, that's how we end today? Since he's dying. Okay, go ahead, Ben Har. Whenever a cat gets to a restaurant, it orders, it orders fried fish unless they are sold out. He orders chicken pie. We didn't know that about cats before, and now we do. So that's a learning experience for all of us. Okay, so go ahead. Give yourself a high five, because that was awesome. And erase your boards. <laughs> erase your boards. Make sure they go back in the right place and nice and neat. Markers go up nice and neat and go back to your seats and we'll get ready for writing.